Let me start by welcoming everyone to today's presentation. Today we will take a look at how you can work with Microsoft Office Document on an Apple device. Or to be more exact, how you work with Microsoft Documents on an iPad and an iPhone. The documents we are talking about is Words, Excel and PowerPoint. I have spoken with people over the last two years. Some has an iPad or an iPhone, but many have raised the question, can I purchase Microsoft Office for either these two devices, for an iPad or an iPhone? And my answer is no. The reason is very simple. Microsoft has their own devices. They have their own smartphones and they have their own tablets. The smartphones they have is Nokia and the tablets they have is called Surface. So of course they are not interested in programming an Office application for the iPad or iPhone. But don't get discouraged because you can still work with these documents on an iPad or an iPhone. The way you can do it is to use the three programs that comes with an iPad or an iPhone today. It is called iWorks and the three programs is called Keynote, it is called Numbers and it is called Pages. Keynote equals PowerPoint, Numbers equals Excel and Pages equals Word. And you are able to use these programs to open Word documents or Excel documents or PowerPoint documents from Microsoft with these three apps. You can even save the modifications or documents in the Word format, the Excel format or the PowerPoint format. So yes, you can use the three apps or they come as a package called iWorks, you can use them to work with these documents. It also has to be said that these three programs come for free today. When and if you buy an Apple device, and that's from an iMac to a MacBook to the iPad to the iPhone, you get these programs for free. You can download them and you can use them. And they work with Office documents. But there is another way. That is by using a program called Cloud On. That is a product that simulates how you work with Excel Word and PowerPoint and I think it's a great product. So I'll take you through how you make that work. So what do you need to make that work on an iPad or an iPhone? You need of course to buy an iPad or an iPhone. My understanding is that CloudOn works on most iPads and most iPhones, at least from 4, 4S, 5C, 5S. And the iPad is from iPad 2, the iPad, iPad 4, and iPad Air. So if you have one of these devices, you can make it work. I also have to mention that CloudOn also works on Android, but we will concentrate about the iPad and the iPhone today. CloudOn is an app where you have to have access, of course, to the internet and you have to have access to what we call a cloud drive, a file storage up in the clouds. And I'll go through what that means and what kind of service you need to look for. CloudOn works with Word, Excel and PowerPoint. When I say that it works with Word, Excel and PowerPoint is that you can open these documents, you can edit the document and you can share these documents. There's other documents you can open like PDF and so on in CloudOn. But when we are talking about editing Microsoft Office documents, then we're talking about Word, Excel and PowerPoint. With CloudOn, it is very flexible in regards to to tap, swipe and type because when we are talking about an iPhone and an iPad, you don't have a mouse, you don't have a keyboard, but they have made up for that. I think it's very easy to work with it. And then also when you work with some documents, depending on if it's work related, it can take a lot of space. But when you share it in the cloud, you don't have to worry about the space you have on an iPhone or an iPad. So get it done here. So you can use Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint on your tablet, smartphone. You can create them, review them and edit the files and you can share them. You can also, if you're out there and you use AirPlay, you can use that as a presentation tool where you have your presentation up in the cloud, you have access to the internet and you can thereby present stuff 
with devices that is AirPlay compatible so that if you have classes, you have a demo by customers and so on, you can do that. You can also inset formulas. You can change formatting. You can track changes, but not in the free version because there is two versions. There's a free version and a version you have to pay for, or they call it the business version. But as you can see here, you can open, rename, delete, simply manage virtually any file type stored in your Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, Microsoft Skydive, and so on. And these are iCloud accounts, and we'll take a look at them a little bit later. But these are the five cloud drives that you can work with. And I'll go through how you set at least one of them up. I'll take a look at the Dropbox. And like I said, you can also share files with colleagues. You can discuss changes. And like I said, you can edit from there. You can take them and add them as an attachment to your emails and send them out. You can send them through messages. So there's many ways of doing it. So online storage. With CloudOn, you need what we call a file space, or I call it an online storage and cloud storage. And here is the ones that CloudOn works with. It works with Dropbox. It works with Skydive from Microsoft. It works with Google Drive from Google. It works with Box from Box and then Hightail. So these you can use. If you already have them on your device, then you can use that as the storage. But it has to be said that CloudOn needs a storage and it needs an online storage or file space up in the cloud. Many of these are for free, but let me emphasize, it's like with CloudOn, there is two versions. There is a version that's for free for what we call for private use. And then there is a business version that you have to pay for. The same is when you look at all these file spaces or online storages. There are some out there who provide free services, but there is limitation with that. Mostly it's the space. Sometimes it's the time that you can have the space for free. Some gives you 14 days of trial, and after that you have to pay for using it. In most cases, if you don't exceed five gigabyte, then many times you can use it as much as you want for free. The one we will take a look at today is the Dropbox for private use. But I also want to emphasize that if you want more features and of course, more space, then you have to pay for it. And then you go in and sign up for Dropbox for business. The game is for SkyDrive. And so what we will take a look at is the Dropbox for private use. Dropbox for private use is easy to sign up to. You can either use a browser on your computer, laptop, to log in and create yourself an account. Or you can go into the App Store and download the Dropbox and then create the account from there. And what we will look at today is, like I said, the Dropbox. But I also have to say that you can go in and get a Dropbox for business. And there is a difference. For instance, you were able to share storage with multiple users so that you can collaborate with your colleagues in regards to files that you have in there. You can share them with employees, vendors, and clients. Also, that you pay for how much storage you need. You can access the files from as many devices as you want. It has a secure encryption. And it has an admin console to manage all these permission and all these users. For the Dropbox for business, you get the first 14 days for free. But if you take the one for private use, you can have it, but you can't exceed five gigabyte. And you can only have up to a couple of devices that can log into the Dropbox. Also, what's the significance in regards to a Dropbox for business is that it is really meant for the company and it meant for teamwork where everybody stores their contents in there so that you can share it. And then it works with computers, with smartphones and with tablets. And like I said, that you have to pay for. But when we go back to the Dropbox for private use, it's very simple to sign up and sign in. And I'll go through that by showing you on a video how that's done. So the to-do list to be able to work with Microsoft documents on an iPad or an iPhone is very simple. You go to the Apple App Store and then what you do is you download and install the following. You install the Dropbox 
first and if you don't like the Dropbox but you have a box you have a Google Drive or Microsoft SkyDrive and then of course use that but you need it and if you like them better instead of downloading the Dropbox you download the box the Google Drive the Microsoft SkyDrive all that is in the App Store the cloud on you download either the free version or you download the business version but the reason I say in that sequence is because when you set up your cloud on it needs to access a file storage so that has to be there before you can install the cloud on so first you set up in this case here the Dropbox and then you set up the cloud on and then of course you're ready to use it so these are the to-do lists so I will go in and simply show you through a video what you have to do to get started and start working with Microsoft Office documents on an iPad and an iPhone okay before we go further let's go in and take Take a look at the official Dropbox video where we get an idea what is Dropbox before we go ahead and look closer at the Dropbox app and what has to be done. So let's go in and take a look at their introduction video. You've been there. You're about to buy lunch and realize your wallet is in your other pants. Or maybe you left your keys at home. The problem is organization. You need one place for everything, like a magic pocket. Putting something in the magic pocket means it's always there, no matter what you wear or where you are. The same thing is true for computers. If you have more than one, keeping track of all of your files can be a pain. Solving this problem is one of the big ideas behind Dropbox. It's like a magic pocket, a single, secure place for all of your stuff. Let's meet Josh, who is preparing for a big trip to Africa. Right now, all of his trip info is spread across his laptop, desktop, and phone. He needs to consolidate it all and is tired of having to email files to himself or move them around with a USB drive. Then he found Dropbox, which creates a new kind of folder on his computers. These folders work hard to be exactly alike, even across Macs and PCs. By adding his itinerary to his laptop Dropbox, he can be sure the same file will show up in his desktop Dropbox and even on his phone. The same thing happens when he saves a document in a Dropbox folder. The document gets updated across all of his Dropboxes. But it's not just his computers. The Dropbox website also works to be exactly like his other Dropboxes. Anything he puts in Dropbox is available on the website automatically. This way, if his Jeep takes a dive and his computer is ruined, he can still get to his files on the Dropbox website, where they're always backed up. As it turns out, Josh's Safari was a success, and his laptop made it home with lots of videos and photos to share. Instead of emailing everything, he just shared a Dropbox folder with his mom so she could get copies of photos she wants to frame. Because it worked so well for travel, Josh made Dropbox the home for all of his stuff, so it's accessible anytime, wherever he goes. Whether you're traveling the world, running a business, or simply organizing your life, Dropbox means you can stop worrying about managing files and backups and get on with your next adventure. You can download Dropbox now at dropbox.com. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this little movie here. I hope it gave you a quick overview what Dropbox is all about and the philosophy and what they're trying to accomplish. The reason I put that emphasis in that is that Dropbox here went through what they're trying to do, but it's really covering all of them out there when we are talking about the Google Drive, the Microsoft SkyDrive. They're all trying to do the same, and I felt that this introduction movie from Dropbox really covered it. So what's next is that we have to get into the Apple Store and in there we have to find Dropbox we have to download it and then we have to install it it has to be said that when you get into the App Store and you download a program even that is for free you still have to log in and you still have to give up your Apple ID and your password no credit card will be charged when it's for free but you still have to give it up and when we go in there and we download it then they will at the same time be installed and the setup comes when you start the program and that will be the next step in this journey here in regards to Dropbox. You can see here here is my iPad illustrated and as you can see it is in a vertical position and for people who doesn't work with iPad daily let me take you to a quick tour here how the iPad works. It has to be said I could also have illustrated an iPhone because when you look at the functionalities and how you're operating it it's really very 
very very similar of course the iPhone is smaller the surface is smaller in the sense of what you operate with it but many times the buttons are exactly the same places as you can see here here's the screen and this is the screen where we are on our home page and down here we had a button down here that we call the home button then there's some buttons we don't see if we go up in the top up here on the top surface up here to the right there is the turn on and off button then over here to the right side of the iPad here is the volume control and the lock and unlock feature in regards to the rotation or it can also be the lock and unlock feature for sound and here I can just illustrate look at the screen right now when I click on this to the right here you can see that it's in my case here the button is set to be the lock and unlock to the rotation of the iPad what does it mean with the rotation it means that if I sit here with my iPad in a vertical position and I want to turn it and be horizontal then when I lean it to horizontal you can see here that the screen follows the home screen turns so that it fits the horizontal position and when I turn it back to the vertical position it turns with it if I then go in and lock the screen in regards to the rotation if I then lean it to the left you can't see that I'm doing that but I am then you can see the screen stays where it is it doesn't follow the rotation of the device does get illustrated on the screen it doesn't follow so I will go up and unlock it again because I always let it follow in most cases. What we can't see either is that down here is the plug in regards to the charging of the iPad. Up here to the left top up here there is the plug in regards to our headsets so that's up here this little dot here is the camera so that was a very quick overview in regards to the iPad here what we have to accomplish now is that we have to download the Dropbox and to do that we need to go into the Apple App Store and the way we do that is we launch the Apple App Store app to get in there the way we can do it is that we can go through here by swipe the finger from the right to the left and here you can see here's different pages pages these you see here are icons but over here these that looks like just plain with small icons in it these are called the folders we can go through all them to find that app there's a smarter way it's to swipe the finger from up to down from up to down then what you do is that you pick up the search part of it and then I'll just go in and say I need the App Store app so let's just say app and then you can see already now it sits up there and say hey top hit is the App Store yes so when I press the top up here it will find that app and go in and launch it and now I am on my way into the Apple App Store it has to be said that the device the iPad has to be connected to the Wi-Fi network or if you have one with a G3 connection then you don't need that but if you just have a plain iPad where there is only Wi-Fi connection possible then it has to be connected to the Wi-Fi because else you can't connect to the Apple App Store so now I'm in here and now I want to go in and look for the Dropbox and as you can see already here now up in the right up here you can see there's already said Dropbox because I went in and start looking for it before just to see if it worked so here is already there so if I click my finger up here you can see the Dropbox I can say yeah Dropbox for iPad yes that's the one I'm looking for and here it comes up here we can see that here's apps that I can download and in this case here you can see when you look at the right side of each square here it says Dropbox it says instant college pro and so on you can see there is a small blue one says open 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 and then there's a price where you can see when it says open that means that I already have that app I have already installed it and the only thing I can do now is just to open it or launch it there is an app down here where it says free that means that I haven't downloaded it it's not mine but I could and what it says to me is that that app is for free if it says an amount as you can see here there is a, a 99 cent app if I click on that then it will cost me 99 cent of course when we start downloading stuff you need your Apple ID and your password to do so doesn't matter if it's for free or not you have to enter the Apple ID and the password to get the apps even that they're for free in this case here what we are looking after is the Dropbox and if you press on normally if you don't have it on your iPad it says free if you press on free it will download it and install it in one swoop that means that you only have to say okay I want it and then it goes in and if it's the first time you're logging on then it will of course tell you hey what is your Apple ID and your password because you can't download anything before you log into that account
we can see here sign in to iTunes store I have to do the same so I'll go in and just sign in right away let me just do that say okay and then it says that my Apple ID password is incorrect so I'll retry so let's see if I can remember my password and so now I press and now I should be able to go in and open it and here you can see it runs that little circle here and for me that indicates that there was an update to the app so now it goes in and say hey I needed to update before you can open it so you can run into that where you go in and say open and then it says yeah but there is an update that you have to download first and that was the reason they needed my ID so now when I press open you can see now it goes to the app so there was an update I haven't was not aware of and that right now it went in and said okay I will download the app before you can go in and launch your app so let's go in and take a look at the Dropbox now so now we were able to download and install Dropbox now we have to start working with it or we have to start setting it up first so what you see here is my home screen and what I'll do now is that I'll just put my iPad down so that I have it horizontal so I have a wider page here when I'm working Working with my iPad and I of course have already installed or I know where my Dropbox is so when I go you can see here by swiping from the right to the left I go pages by pages and I already know where I have to go so when I click here on a folder you can see here here is my Dropbox already and I'll just press with my finger on the Dropbox the first thing you get to here is a welcome screen and it says here swipe to learn more about Dropbox if you already have an account just press the little sign in down there and you are ready to go but just to give you a sightseeing here if we swipe again from the right to the left you can see here it says the first thing when you take photos Dropbox keep them safe for you the next one is access document from your computer when on the go and that is really what we need when we are setting up our cloud on so that is the part of Dropbox we need to work with Microsoft Office documents and the next page here says you stuff anywhere and then we at the end and you can see again here it says if you already have an account sign in or sign up in my case I already have an account so if I press sign in what I get to here is I get into a login screen but as you can see here you have more options here you have create an account you have trouble signing in if you have trouble in this case here I'll just put in my login because I have already done that but if you've never done that then you create an account and what is asking you for is an email address you want to use as your login and then of course you have to come up with a password you really get to where I am already other than I have certain documents already in my Dropbox but if you just create it there shouldn't be anything in your Dropbox when you create it but here for me I have already done that so I'll just sign in here and then I have to come up with a password here and then I press sign in and as soon as you do that then it comes in here and you will get asked right away for camera uploads remember when you have an iPad number one the first one who came out doesn't have any cameras so that's a problem and then later on you get cameras in it but it says here enable camera upload if you want that right now I don't want that right now so I'll cancel but if you say enable then you give it the program the permission just to go into your photo folder so I'll just say cancel and now you're in and here we can see I already have certain files in here in regards to photos you can see there is some folders photos public solutions and then uploads and down here you can see there is a very important point that is the settings and that's the first one you go into first in here you can see that it has your email address already then it says hey you have space use and when you have just created your account then you should of course have the five gigabyte you get for free in regards to the the box is that with the Dropbox you get five gigabyte for free but if you want more and you want the Dropbox business you have to click on upgrade account so if you press here you can see here a Dropbox Pro 100 upgrades to Pro 100 is $99 a year just that you have that in mind but I'll go back I'll not upgrade mine and as I said if you don't exceed the five gigabyte you can keep this account I'll not say forever perhaps someday they will come and ask you for money but right now it's for free then you can see here the next one is camera upload is off because I haven't set it on then you can say password lock is off not on and then you can go down and see the rest of here you can see down here that I can unlink my iPad because remember when you have a normal user Dropbox 
that means that you can have a couple of devices that you can upload stuff to your Dropbox with. You can't just have infinity of devices. No, there is a limit. And then also there is a limit in regards to how much you can store up there. But that's what you do first. Set it up and then you can go in and see files. This iPad now is set up. Then it's always linked to your Dropbox. That means that you can always approach it because when you logged in, it remembers your login. That means your email and your password. So it should happen automatically because here there is no exit. The only thing you can do now is go into settings and you can unlink your iPad. When you're in, you can't unlink it. What you can do is you can close the program. You can click twice and then you can simply just swipe it away. But as soon as you press, you go into the folder again and as soon as you press Dropbox, then you're back in the program. It locks in automatically. It's set up to get in there right away. And that's what has to happen before you go in and set up Cloud On. So that should help you from here. So let's go in and look at Cloud On. Okay, before we continue with the downloading of Cloud On, I just want to go through a few things. As I said in the beginning of my video, there was two versions of Cloud On. There is the Cloud On for private use, the normal for everyone that want to use the program in a limited version. And then if you want the full version, you have to upgrade to a Cloud On Pro. And here is a very short description of how that works. Cloud On is free for vast majority of your daily needs. And there is hundreds of features available to create, review, edit, and share your files on any screen. For the advanced functionality, Cloud On Pro offers access across all your devices and also that you can track changes in spelling and grammar in Microsoft Words, insert tables and filter data in Microsoft Excel, insert smart art and presentation mode in Microsoft PowerPoint. There is a list of extra features that you don't have in the limited version that you have if you sign up for Cloud On Pro. What does it cost? And remember, this is a price right now. We don't know what time will tell, but here you can see if you purchase a Cloud On Pro, you have two pricing. If you pay per month, it's right now $299. And if you pay per year, it is $29.99. And you can see you save approximately about $6 if you sign up for a year. But as it says here also, it's a promotional pricing. So it's available up to December 2013. So what happens after that, I cannot say. For a list of Cloud On Pro subscription options, you have to go to their websites and see what's going on. And in regards to getting ready for Cloud On Pro, it's just to log in, register your account, and you're ready to use the program. And if you then want to take advantage of all these extra features that they are offering you, then you can go in and when you're logged into Cloud On, you can upgrade in there to the Pro version and by giving them either credit card information and so on, you can sign up either for $2.99 per month or $29.99 yearly as long as the promotion goes on. So why don't we leave it there and then let's go in and see how you download and install Cloud On and how you set it up and start using it. And like I said before, before we have gotten to this, you should have already installed either Dropbox, Google Drive, so that that is ready. You have installed it and you have set it up so that you could use that information to set up Cloud on because it needs this information to complete the installation. So let's go in and take a look so at the So as video. we can see here, I'm on my homepage and I have put my iPad down in a horizontal position so that I have the width of the iPad. So that's the way I like to work. So why don't we go in and download Cloud On? And first of all, we have to go in and find the Apple App Store app and we have it here. Don't confuse it with the one called the Apple Store. That's an app that's out now. As we can see here, there's two. There's called the App Store and the Apple Store. The Apple Store is where you go in and purchase like laptops, programs, everything that normally is in the Apple Store. The App Store is where you go in and purchases apps. So let's just go in and press App Store, not Apple Store, but App Store. So up here in the right corner, I'll just write Cloud On. And as you can see here, already now, you can see the list that comes up here, Cloud On and so on. And that's the one I'm looking for. So I will press Cloud On. And as you can see here again, as I explained before in regards to Dropbox, is that you can see where 
it says free. These are apps I don't have, but that I can download. If there is a price like here, fourteen ninety nine is apps that I don't have either, but I have to pay for. Where it says open, that says that I already have downloaded the app and it's already installed. In regards to any of these, the free apps, the apps that you have to pay for, when you log in the first time and you want to get it, you have to, if you are downloading something and you want to install on your computer, even that is free or that you have to pay for it, you have to give them your Apple ID plus your password to do so. So here in regards to the cloud on, here it will have said free because cloud on the app itself is free if you then later want to go pro that means cloud on pro professional that's in the program where you go in and decide that now you want to pay for using the program and that gives you access to many more features that is in cloud on so why don't we go in now and start up cloud on and take a look how that works but before we do this, let's go in and see the official video that CloudOn has created in regards to promoting their app. So let's go in and take a look at that video and then we will return. Back in the day, you only stored files on your hard drive. And collaboration was hard because you were constantly saving files to a disk or emailing them back and forth a million times. Then the cloud came along and blew our minds because you could just save your files in one place and then access them from anywhere at any time on any computer. Collaboration became super easy. But now some of the people on your team are using fancy new mobile devices and those new devices don't support the old applications. So they can't open or edit any of those important documents, which means collaboration is once again hard. How are you supposed to keep your team productive with all this changing and evolving? Well, it's simple. If files can be hosted in the cloud, why not applications too? At CloudOn, we put the applications you need in the cloud, so you can run them on all the fancy mobile devices you love. And by connecting to whatever cloud storage you already use, Everyone on your team can access and edit the same files. No converting or lost in translation craziness. It's as though the application was right there on your device, while still supporting all the native gestures you're already used to. So once again, collaboration's easy. To find out more, download the app or check out cloudon.com. Okay, so let's continue with what do we need to make so, this work. So now we have downloaded and installed our cloud on. So let's go in and set it up. And in this case here, I have already put it in a folder. So as you can see here, I have turned my iPad horizontal so that I have a, how can I say, more comfortable surface to work on. And I already know where I put it. So I'll just swipe over here and I'll go into the same folder that where I have my Dropbox. And remember, before we ever install the cloud on, we have to install the Dropbox or other cloud-based drives that's out there like the Google Drive, like Microsoft Skydive or Box and so on, so that you have that installed first. So let's go in and start up Cloud On up here. And the first thing that has to happen here is that it goes in and say here, if you already have an account, then sign in. Or if you don't have an account, create an account. And I will create an account here, so I'll just press create an account. Then I have to give them my email and I will do that. And then I have to choose a password that I will use. And then I hit return. That's the first step out of two. Here I have to set up my box that I'm using. So I will choose the Dropbox because that's the one I set up on my iPad. So here I'll put in the setup that I have used for that. So I'll put in my email address and then I'll press sign in. And it's says here cloud on would like to access all files and folders in your dropbox and of course i will allow that and now it sets itself up here and it says of course it offers me to become a cloud on pro in this case here you can see down the right corner i'll just press skip for now so here i'll get the welcome screen to cloud on cloud on is your personal mobile workspace here's a quick seven step tour that introduces some of the features and i think we will take a quick tour here in a moment just to see how 
how the rest so is working. So here we see the welcome screen to Cloud On. And what it says here is that Cloud On is your personal mobile workspace. And I can only agree with that. And then it says here that they offer us a seven step tour just to introduce us to Cloud On. And I think we should do that. So let's just press continue. And then the next thing is a general information. It says here that Cloud On is the place where you manage all your files, you create files, you edit files, you present files. And when we're talking about files, we're talking about the Microsoft Office files, the Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. Plus, that when you do changes, they get saved automatically. And here it has to be said, to do that, you need access to the internet all the time. Either via Wi-Fi, G3, G4, but you have to have access to the internet. Why? Because we have set up, in my case here, I set up the Dropbox because that's where the documents are. You could have set it up to Box or Google Drive or Microsoft, SkyDrive or so on. But you need access to these files not only just to access them, but also to save the changes you do automatically. So just be aware of that. So let's go to the next point by press continue. The next one says that it's easy to manage your cloud on account because there's only three icons as you see here up in the top. These three icons is really the navigation in cloud on. And I think that's an easy way of going about it. So let's hear what this menu bar up there can do. And here it says the first icon up here, that's the views icon menu. That's where you can set up how you want to view your content. And in this case here, there's three forms of views. There's a flow view, an icon view, and a list view. Most of us like, or I like, the icon view. The reason is that the icon itself tells me what kind of document it is that I'm working on. And at the same time, it tells me the file's name, and it tells me what format it is. Is it an older document format, or is it a newer document format? So I like the icon view, but it is up to the individual to set it up as you want. And that's the first icon up there to the left. That's where you can set up the way you view your content. So let's go to the next one by pressing continue. That is the status icon menu, where when you go in here, that's where you set stuff up. That's where I started up the tutorial here. That's where you can change the password from, if you have an older password, you can set a new password up. You can go in and contact the software company that have created CloudOn by going in there and you can approach their website. And so that's really where you go in and what I say, manage the system in regards to preferences and system setup. That's the one called the status icon menu. That's also where you can go in and check if you're connected because that's where you can see, okay, I am connected to my cloud drive out there so that I can work with my files. And that you do under the second one up there, the status icon. So let's press continue. The last one is the application menu. And that's where you start up which kind of document type you want to work with, either the Word, Excel, or the PowerPoint. So you choose up there which format you want to work on and that is the word excel and powerpoint that's the only ones you can really work in and then you can do just go up there and tap it and then get started so let's press continue with the next one then you see over to the right over there with the arrow that's where you refresh the screen because if you feel that there is any files there that is missing in action the mia missing in action if that what you feel then you can press the refresh icon and it will refresh the screen then there is here when you open a file by tapping the file name and then it starts up in the right app or in this right type of app that you want to work in but you could also just have hold the finger over the file that you want to work with and here you can go in and either cut a file you can copy a file you can rename a file you can delete a file and you can share a file if you just hold on the finger on the icon in this case here then you will get what they call the edit menu and then you can choose what you want to do with the file. And that's it. That's the seven step menu here. So when I press finish, I am back again to the screen. And there is a few more things I would like to go through with you, but that was just a quick tour. The first thing we'll do is that now we have looked at the tutorial and let's take just a navigation tour through that whole thing here just so we get the feel of it. As you can see here, I listed all my contents in a list form or list view. And the way I can change that is, remember what we saw in the tutorial, there is the three icons here in the top. And the first one is the view icon. So when I press on the view icon, you can see this is the flow form where we see the contents listed in a flow view. When I press again, then I get the icon view where we see the icons. And that's the way I like it, where I see the icons. I can see what file type it is. I can see the file name. And I like that. And then again, that was the list form. 
Here we can see when the file was modified, we can see the size of the file, we can see the type of the file. And so I'll go back again to the icon view. Then we have the next one. That's the status view. And in here we will of course go in and look at the connection. And you can see that it is connected because else it would not be green and it will be just dark gray. Then we have the basic settings, the help and the tutorial. The help is that you can contact CloudOn and get support. Then the next one is the application icon. And that's where we have Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And here, if we want to write a Word document, we just press Word. And then we just go in and say, we can say we want just a test. And we can make a test because I already, so I'll make a test three and then say new. Then it will go in, start the program up, and then it will go in and save the file already now as test three on your, in my case here, Dropbox. And remember, we can take any of the cloud drives that we have out there, like the Google Drive, like Box, like Microsoft's Skydive, and so on. So we can take these to set up. And now I can just go in and type. And the way I do it is just to hold a finger there or on the page, and then I can start typing what I want. And remember, Remember, it saves it automatically. So when I go out of it, then we'll see in here that there is a test tree, and that's a Word document. So if I call it up again, you will see that my document, when it's called up, here is the stuff that I already typed in. Very easy to do. Here, I can also go in and say, yeah, but I want to deal with Excel documents. And here, I could go up to the application icon up here and choose Excel, or I could just click on one of the spreadsheets that I'm already working on, and it will call the Excel, and it will come up, and then you can continue in here. And remember, just a quick click on the page on the worksheet and then you just go in here and you can, let's say here we put a one and hit a turn, put a two, hit return, put a three, hit return. And then as I said before, if we just go back again to the navigation screen here, then you can see here that it should have saved it. So if I click on my Excel sheet again, then you can see here one, two, three, so it's saved. And you can see that it literally looks so familiar with the Office, with Microsoft Office. You can see the icons up here. You can see in regards to the menu points and so on, they are so much alike Microsoft Office that everybody who is used to work with Microsoft Office will easily be familiar with it and then go in and edit, change, or create documents. And as I said before, we can create, we can edit, we can save, we can modify, we can do what we want in regards to Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And here with PowerPoint, again, you just click on the PowerPoint document. It will call PowerPoint up, or you could go up to the application icon, press that, and it will go into PowerPoint. So there is that way of doing it also. And in here you can go up here and say new slide I can choose which one I want it will create the page and here we can type in a headline here we can just say test so and then just click down here and then when I press exit and go back again if I go in and call the same PowerPoint document up again here or presentation PowerPoint presentation you can see here's the chains and so on so it saves it automatically go back again but remember in regards to iCloud you need access to the internet either via Wi-Fi G3 G4 and so on that's the necessary thing there is much to learn I can't go through that whole thing right now because it'll take too long but again here it should be easy to navigate it should be easy to get started just that you follow the to-do list and do it in the right sequence then you should be up running in no time i hope these videos have given you an idea how you work with microsoft office documents on an ipad thanks for viewing and i hope to see you again soon Thank you.